co-workers and even strangers. It is a partnership with people who realize that we all have a responsibility to reduce pollution and to increase the quality of the air that we breathe. <laughs> we all want to to protect Utah's extraordinary environment and unsurpass quality of life. Let me be clear. I remain opposed to the importation of foreign nuclear waste into Utah. <laughs> Certainly the challenges of being a state with a federally created nuclear waste disposal facility are complex and ongoing. My responsibilities on these issues, on the other hand, are quite simple, and they will not be compromised. As a governor, I will take and use all available state resources within the law to protect the health, safety, and welfare of all Utahns now and for generations to come. Now, I'd like to expand our focus beyond the legislative session. For certain, when the budget is adopted, the session is ended, and the bills have been signed or vetoed, Another important work will remain. I cannot say enough about the importance of supporting public education. I am bringing together individuals and groups from across the education community to craft new and innovative solutions to significantly improve the education we provide our children. Utah's teachers work hard, but they face classes that continue to grow in size, complexity, and diversity. They need new tools to continue to be successful. While the solutions to some problems does, in fact, come down to dollars and cents, there are other solutions that rely on common sense, not just more funding. I am optimistic that the Governor's Educational Excellence Commission, which I will personally chair, will find, develop, and implement these solutions. Our state deserves a blueprint for success in education, and I believe this group can get us there. We owe it to our students and to the future of our state to provide an education that prepares our youth to compete in the global marketplace. This will not happen, however, without a renewed and sustained emphasis in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math. Indeed, many of the jobs that are available today and those our students will see in the future already require these skills. I call upon students, caregivers, parents, educators, and business leaders to join me in addressing the critical need to immerse our students in these fields of study. If we all pitch in with the spirit of commitment that this state is known for, we can be leaders in providing the most competitive and productive workforce in the nation. This is not just an investment of dollars, but of time, energy, and innovation for all of us. And tonight, I also call upon the Utah Board of Regents and the Commission of Higher Education, Bill Seabrook to present me with a report due this fall that shows how our colleges and universities plan to meet the growing demand for students to meet the workforce needs of Utah's employers in the 21st century. On this front, I'm proud to say tonight that we are taking steps in the right direction. The recently launched Utah Cluster Acceleration Partnership provides a way for critical industry groups to communicate their current and future workforce needs to our educational institutions. This partnership will be the mechanism for education to hear, to anticipate, and to answer industry's needs. The Utah Cluster Acceleration Partnership is a true collaboration with leaders from industry, state government, higher education, and our research community, all working together to significantly increase the economic impact of our most important industry clusters. Let me offer just one example. Utah's aerospace and defense-related industries generate billions of dollars in revenue annually and, and employ tens of thousands of Utahns across the state in high-paying jobs. This is good, but we can do even better. Private and public leaders have teamed up with Weber State University to increase the size of the aerospace cluster in Utah. By focusing on workforce needs in this area, we will develop the talent and innovation necessary to become the premier player in the aerospace industry. As this happens, Utah becomes more than a place companies would like to be, they become a place that they need to be. Long-term planning is critical to Utah's continued success. I've outlined initiatives for education and economic development, and I'd like to conclude with my plan for energy. Tonight, I'm announcing what I would hope will be one of the most impactful economic initiatives ever undertaken in our state. 
It is one that we in Utah are uniquely positioned to accomplish. It is the Utah Energy Initiative. I'm assembling the best minds in the state and charging them with creating a 10-year strategic energy plan whose purpose is threefold. One, to ensure Utah's continued access to our own clean and low-cost energy resources. Two, to be on the cutting edge of new energy technologies. And three, to foster economic opportunities and to create more jobs. We have a rich abundance of diverse natural resources. Everything from traditional fuels such as oil, gas, and coal, to renewables such as solar, wind, and hydroelectric, to the wind projects north of Milford and Spanish Fork Canyon are now producing electricity. Geothermal is rapidly coming online. The blending of solar and biomass with traditional fuels at existing generation sites shows great potential. Simply put, few other states have the energy resources with which we here in Utah have been blessed. But it is the innovation and the entrepreneurial spirit of Utah that truly distinguishes us. We have some of the best research and technology minds in the world. We must further harness and empower them. We must also engage Utah's rural areas in this effort, as there is no one who has more know-how or more at stake than most communities in Utah whose lifeblood is and has historically been the energy industry. Just three months ago, Utah State University announced a partnership between the state, the Department of Energy, and the University of Communities to construct a 70,000 square foot entrepreneurial and energy research center. The project's funding included a $15 million donation from Vermont resident Mark Bingham. What a perfect illustration of how government at all levels can work together with universities, industry, and the private sector to accomplish together what none could achieve individually. We are in a unique position in the Western Energy Corridor, which stretches from Canada on the north to Mexico on the south. We have the generation capacity, we have the transmission, transmission systems, and we are at the crossroads of the energy commerce and transportation infrastructure. Billions of dollars of future capital investment will be required to maintain and to expand our infrastructure. Regulatory systems must be in sync with our long-term energy vision. As a state, one of our true economic competitive advantages is our relatively low cost of power. Our energy plan must focus on maintaining affordability, encouraging capital investment, and protecting our environment. I will do my part to provide leadership both here in the state and also at the national level through such alliances as the Western and National Governors Associations. Utah can and Utah must be at the forefront of solving the world's energy challenges. We've come a long way since pioneers were required to toil and sweat and sacrifice to build homes and farms and communities in what was then the Utah Territory. Since that time, our people have done much to make us a great and significant state. That work continues today. It continues in this capital building and in homes and schools and offices and factories across the state. Our best days are indeed ahead of us. I am bullish on Utah, and I have high hopes for our economic future. This optimism is based on data, good data, facts which show Utah turning the corner economically. If Utah were a stock, and if I were a stockbroker, I would say buy. As governor, I promise that working with you, Utah will continue to belong the path of fiscal responsibility for which we are known. Through selflessness and working together in unprecedented partnerships and in unprecedented ways, we will find new hope and also ensure that Utah remains the greatest state in the nation. Thank you, and may God bless the great state of Utah.